So uh, this is what I put together to try to characterize uh, today's conversation. And I think we can think of it uh, broken up into a, a number of uh, groupings. So the first one had to do with, you know, what is really the potential of the, um, you know, natural nature-based climate solutions. Um, and there seems like huge uncertainty. Um, and, and, and there are some fundamental ideas, you know, is this a haystack or is it a silo? And, and that will have a very big impact on, on how we eventually end up answering that question. And then associated with that was also the, the rate of scale up uh, of these solutions, what's possible. So in the area of the terrestrial ecosystems, um, you know, things like protecting forests, restoring forests, um, you know, there seems to be, you know, very significant potential for doing that um, and also reducing emissions from land use change, um, that, uh, that sort of low hanging fruit. Uh, beyond this, there are some more uh, challenging uh, opportunities involving enhancing natural sinks and a uh, great deal of uncertainty around the potential for this and also just having to deal with things like the variability as we saw from Rob from, uh, from year to year, there's tremendous difference in the uptake. We then moved on to talk about oceans and the key opportunity uh, here seems to be to try to enhance uh, the biological pump and that the, the parts of the oceans that are, well, many parts of the oceans are nutrient limited with one thing or another, but the Southern Ocean is particularly interesting uh, and it's iron limited. Um, however, there are uh, significant questions about permanence. And if you look over longer time periods, uh, that CO2 that was uh, taken up uh, ends up being recycled and perhaps re-emitted. And there are also ecosystem impacts associated with large areas of the ocean that are being perturbed by, uh, by sort of ultra fertilization. So that was a, a little bit on the science side. On the, the side of sort of social issues or other things we need to consider, um, whatever we do, we shouldn't use nature-based climate solutions as an alternative to uh, energy decarbonization. It won't be available fast enough and, and at a big enough scale. We also need to think about the water balance associated with manipulating uh, ecosystems. And we saw some really interesting data showing how forests actually, uh, reforestation uh, or afforestation reduced uh, watershed uh, uh, flows in, uh, in streams and so forth. There's also an issue of cost, equity, um, and, and also just thinking about the energy balance because many of these things uh, have large energy inputs as well. So then more on the social front, you know, if we can identify co-benefits, things like preserving jobs, engaging and inspiring the public, uh, that will help uh, accelerate and deploy uh, these technologies. But again, there's a significant moral hazard associated with, uh, with uh, having people believe that there's a, you know, a, a long-term solution that would, would uh, uh, negate the need for short-term action on fixing the energy system. And then finally, uh, this uh, last idea of two, uh, two important uh, greenhouse gases that we haven't really talked about uh, both with significant potential for uh, improvements. So this is sort of a, a little bit of a mind map. We also do have some very nice uh, a collection of research needs. Um, all of this material will be available. We don't have time to go through this today. Uh, and likewise, uh, some, some key takeaways.